Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning study, a new week of studies. And we're going to continue looking at Daniel 11, but we're going to take a little a detour back into something that I'd forgotten about that we should have looked at earlier. Um, but before we begin this study, can you join me in a word of prayer? The dear, gracious Heavenly Father, we invite your spirit's presence here. And we're so thankful for that we can open your word and that we can share thoughts and ideas, and that your Holy Spirit is here to be our teacher. And so we pray for one another, and we pray for this study, and that the things that we learn will be useful in increasing our faith and strengthening our witness, and that they will show us our need of you. Thank you for all the things that you have been showing us, and help us to continue to examine uh, these truths be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So not a lot of us here yet this morning, but uh, I don't like really studying, uh, starting the study too late. Now, what we have here in front of us is a study uh, that was done uh, in Italy in 2017. So this, this is uh, an old study. And uh, Adilio put this together later on. Right. So he's going to, you know, address this later on uh, with this chart. But this was uh, studied back then. So in 2017, we know, of course, that's when they're going to have that camp meeting that begins. I believe it's June 2nd. And the camp meeting is going to uh, I believe it opens with Jeff praying at 9-11, or at least he opens uh, this. He opens the Sabbath. And it's going to be Pentecost. Uh, so Pentecost is ending and the Sabbath is beginning. Um, and, uh, and that happens at 9-11. And a year later on uh, November 9th, or not November 9th, June 9th. So the one's June 2nd, the other one's June 9th in 2018. He's going to uh, close the Sabbath at 9-11. And in 2017, uh, the sun actually set at 9-11 where they were in Italy. Um, so he was actually was right at sunset that he prayed and it happened to be 9-11. So it's pretty interesting uh, little detail that we noticed back. Well, it was noticed in 2017 and then the one in 2018 it was all put together uh, during that camp meeting in 2018. Anyway. Now, they had this study. Now, we, we've gone through all of these kings, but we're going to look at them again just in this context because we had studied Augustus, Tiberius, uh, and Julius Caesar. Not, not in that order, but Julius Caesar, Augustus, Tiberius. And uh, we believe that we can clearly mark those in Daniel chapter 11, um, going back uh, to verse, uh, well, I guess it would start, uh, verse where we get Julius Caesar, but um, he's going to be a number of verses dealing with him. Uh, but in verse 20, it's going to mention Augustus. Then she'll stand up in his estate, a raiser of taxes in the glory of his kingdom. And, and then we're going to have this vile person, which we mark as Tiberius. And then we're going to have, well, arms will stand with, and with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. So we know that the, the crucifixion is going to occur in that period. And, and the thing that I want to think about here, and hopefully Dwight shows up at some point, but when we have this, um, arms of the flood, they shall be overflown. We had, uh, we, we had some discussion about how to address that symbol so so we we took it as persecution and then we asked the question well, when does persecution occur now did persecution occur in connection with nero yes it did yeah so so we seem to have neglected to think about that and and it occurred in connection with nero with the burning of the city of rome on july 18th uh, 64 AD. Uh, is it right? 64. Yeah, 64. Um, I just got to get these dates in my head. Yeah. So it's going to be, yeah. So the burning of Rome is July 18th, 64 AD. 
And we know that according to Tacitus and later Christian tradition, Emperor Nero blamed the devastation on the Christian community in the city, initiating the empire's first persecution against the Christians. So I think that we should note that, right? So, so when we were addressing this, um, now there is, of course, before Nero, there's Caligula and Claudius. Um, but they're not going to be mentioned. If, if we take that with the arms of the flood, they shall be overflown. Can we connect this to Nero? Now there's, there's lots of things in this little chart here. So I, I just want to go over it. And I'm not sure that I agree with everything about the chart as far as like the line with these first seven Caesars. Cause they're, I mean, so they're not the seven emperors. They're the seven Caesars. So that, that is correct. Julius Caesar is a Caesar. So he's not an emperor, but often they would talk about the first seven emperors. But here they have the first seven Caesars. And I think that's something that we have to, to think about. Now, they're not in this chart. It's not going to go through Julius Caesar and show how he's the time of the end or Augustus that he represents 1992 or Tiberius that he represents 1996. And also I wouldn't agree with that. Uh, as far as, well, I guess it, it doesn't really make much sense here because we have the increase of knowledge. So it's obviously what, what we see in this chart on the bottom part is supposed to be our line. But we know now that this line is not well understood. That is, we try to make it this this whole line. And yet we know that we can look at from 9-11 to the Sunday law as a complete line. And we didn't at this time really understand how these lines worked. So, and I, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that you would take the increase of knowledge and mark it as a way mark with a, with a Caesar, right? So, I mean, I would disagree about how the bottom line is drawn and how we would apply it to our history. Obviously we would equate this with the presidents of the United States at which he does in some of his other studies. So this is Adilio, of course. And uh, so there's there's lots of little things that would have to be corrected. But there are some details here that that we need to pay attention to. Now, the main thing that he's focusing on here is midnight and the midnight cry. So what he's going to do is he's going to look at Claudius and say that Claudius represents midnight. So he says, uh, we see that Claudius is connected with the midnight way mark. Uh, the 2017 study then mentions an event from the French Revolution and connects this to Claudius and to midnight. Uh, this event concerns a probational, probational period starting from November 9th until January 1st. Now, what he doesn't say is what event from the French Revolution uh, connects this to Claudius. So, um, I'm not sure what that was specifically. So the event concerns probational period starting from November 9th until January 1st. So it is remarkable that we already see November 9th here being connected to midnight when only one year later and completely unrelated to this study, midnight was set at November 9th, 2019. Now, um, so I'm not sure exactly. I wouldn't say necessarily that they're unrelated. Because when we deal with the French Revolution, that definitely was related to the November 9th, 2019 prediction, correct? So that was one of the uh, the ties. And, and it's going to be the July 27th date that happens to be the ninth day of the 11th month on the French calendar. But I'm not sure what, what event in the French Revolution they're referring to. And within the movement, we attributed a close of probation to November 9th in relation to the Omega movement. Right. So he's putting this chart together, even though he's talking about the study from Italy in 2017, he's putting this chart together in 2021. So he's talking about the close of probation on November 9th for the false priests, the Omega movement. And then he says, and remarkably, this period from November 9th to January 1, which took place during the French Revolution, was also a probational period during which time French refugees had opportunity to return back to France or be sentenced to death. So, um, so there must be this November 9th date 
Now, I, I remember something about this. Yes, yeah, so November 9th, 1799, as frustration with the leadership reaches a fever pitch, uh, Bonaparte stages a coup d'etat, abolishing the directory and appointing himself as France's first consul. Yes, and I remember actually seeing this on a video. And then there would be, so they have January 1st, so this could be 1799. Yeah, the return, the, the refugees are again ordered to return to France before January 1st, 1792. So that must be a different year. I don't know. I can't find it <coughs> for 1799. So it wasn't obviously it. Hi, Dwight. So we're looking at, um, a Bilio study from 2021 where he's doing, he's showing this study from 2017 from the Italian camp meeting. And, uh, the question that I was, uh, wanting to answer had to do with, um, the persecution. So when we were studying in Daniel 11, uh, verse 22, and it talks about with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him and shall be broken. So we know that it has to do with persecution. And then it says, yea, also the prince of the covenant. So we know that that they're going to be persecuted like Christ was, right? That's kind of the idea. But the question is, when did the first persecution occur? And we would say that that's going to be under Nero, correct? Dwight, if you're there. I'm here. Right. So we're studying Nero um, just in connection with the persecution. that that. So if we look at this history, we're going to have course Julius Caesar and we're going to have Augustus Augustus is going to represent Obama Tiberius is representing Trump right and then it's going to talk about this persecution so it's it's not going to deal with you know Caligula and uh, the other guy Claudius right per se it's going to just uh, jump to this persecution so this arms of a flood so they be overflown from before him and and I'm arguing that this is the first persecution that happens, and this is in the time of Nero, in connection with the burning of Rome on July 18th, uh, 64 AD. So I thought we should look at this just to tie up some of these loose ends. All right. Okay. So anyway, what he's doing here is he's he's going over the study from 2017 in how it was understood by him later in 2021. So so he's he's got the first seven Caesars, so he's not calling them emperors here. Caesars, which of course would be true. And then he's marked out these waymarks, which don't really make sense to me, because I wouldn't have the increase of knowledge as a separate waymark. It's just something that happens between the time and the end and the formalization of the message. But he doesn't have the two 911s in there. So I would have changed some of that stuff. And, and I think this is valid, you know, as far as uh, looking at these Caesars. So, so there's some merit in this. But what we're concerned about is the persecution under Nero. So it's not about this whole study. It's going to be more about what happens with Nero. So there's there's supposed to be this period of time from November 9th to January 1st, which I can't find, uh, dealing with a probationary period. Okay. So it's 54 days, which represents the fifth day of the fourth month. Um, and it starts on November 9th, right? So, and then, so one year later, we set November 9th as midnight. So in 2018, and the length of the period being 54 days, obviously, fifth day of the fourth month and July 21st. And um, also the year that Claudius reign ends is 54 AD. So when Nero's rage, uh, reign begins at the age of, uh, well, so it's at the age of 63 that Claudius dies. Okay. Um, so we see the symbol for midnight there. And then Claudius died October 13th, which in that year was the biblical date, the 21st day of the seventh month. Um, so 21-7, again, July 18th, to define midnight. And October of 13th, of course, was the date in 2008 when the date for midnight was established to be November 9th, 2019. So some very strong evidence uh, regarding this symbol being midnight. And then we're going to deal with Nero. So um, so the city of Panium 
was named after Nero for a while between 61 and 67 AD. Uh, of course, we know Panium or Panium is also known as Caesarea Philippi. Um, so there's just one city ever be named after Nero. And it happens to be Panium. And when we have the study from Italy in 2017, where Tabo presents the seven Caesars, so this is going to be Tabo's study, where Nero just happens to be positioned on the midnight pride way mark. So a lot of these observations are more uh, Odilios. That is, in this study in 2017, Tabo's not dealing with all these dates and symbols, right? A few of them. Obviously, some of them he's going to miss completely um, because he's not he's not going to recognize, obviously, November 9th and July 18th as symbols. Um, I don't even think he would he would even recognize, obviously, the biblical calendar. He wouldn't know uh, things like that. And, and November 9th is not going to mean anything to him in 2017 as a symbol. It, the July 18th study was not yet existing in 2017. And in the 2017 study, the Great Fire of Rome is then being mentioned, which took place during Nero's reign, uh, July 1864 AD. It was the night of July 18, and history has blamed Emperor Nero for the Inferno, the Great Fire of Rome, and there's support for the theory that he burned down the city of Rome on purpose. Nero himself burned down the city of Rome. Now, he's going to deal with this false flag. Um, so Dilio has believes a lot in false flags. He sees them almost everywhere. 9-11 is a false flag, you know, all these different shootings and things like that. So whether this is truly a false flag, I mean, and how, you know, we, we just don't know enough about that history. But it seems that Ellen White supports the idea that Nero burned to doubt. And and he's blaming it on Christians. So he lines up with July 18th, then he lines up with the midnight cry, Waymark. On top of that, it has historically been recorded that Nero reigned from October 1354 to June 9th, 68. So we know from June 9th to October 13th, if we count the other way, in 2018, from when Jeff does that 9-11 prayer that, that begins July 10th, technically, that that's going to be 126 days to October 13th, where I'm going to do the calculation from October 13th at noon, the 391 and a half days to November 9th, 2019. So the October 13th and June 9th being tied into Nero's uh, reign is, even though it's in a reverse order, is still important symbols. So these are the very dates that led up to the proclamation of Midnight Cry from Priests on October 13th, 2018. Based on the June 9th, 2018 waymark, Daniel Machado Pereira, that's Daniel from Brazil, predicted October 13th, 2018 to be the day when the Midnight Cry would be given, and he was correct. So there's some important detail there. Also, Nero was born on uh, December 15th, 37 AD, and... Uh, 13, or, or pardon me, 15th, the 15th of December in 37, 15 times 12 times 37 is 6660. So we got a Sunday law symbol attached to it. Mark of the beast. A any thoughts about this chart before I close it? Now, I've always said before that I don't think that Odilio was wrong about the Nero and, and the great fire of Rome as far as these symbols do exist here. It's just exactly how do we apply them uh, within, you know, what line and where is the model? And so the idea that you're going to apply this later to the seven kings, you know, five or fallen one is, I, I don't think that we can do that in this history. So, but, but any thoughts about this, about this chart? Did I go through it too fast? Is it all understood really well? Yeah, well, I assume everybody understands it. But there's no questions. So when we look at this uh, chart here, or, or, or not our chart, but our uh, paper that we've been working on, and it's with the arms of a flood shall they, of the Jewish nation, we say, be overflown. Um, and the, the, we're saying that this is the destruction of Jerusalem from before God's face and shall be broken, persecuted. So we know that this does refer to the destruction of Jerusalem, right? I mean, that's what we believe. But this persecution, the question is, when does it begin? And we would say that it's going to begin with Nero, 
historically that's when Christians are going to first be persecuted under Nero. Do, do we agree with that? Like by Rome? That would seem to be the premise. Okay. And, and that seems to be supported by the spirit of prophecy, right? So, so I don't think that we can just, you know, cast that aside. Not that we would even want to. I mean, it's, it's just that somewhere in, in this verse, it's talking about the crucifixion of Christ. It's talking about persecution, right? Which is this broken, uh, but it's also addressing the destruction of Jerusalem. So it's placing all of those events that obviously the crucifixion of Christ is in the time of Tiberius, but it's going to bring us to the time of Titus. So it's going to encompass all of that, that history. Okay. Now, if we were to take this, these um, seven Caesars, and, and we look at when we looked at the chart that that Odilio has, I think there's probably different ways in which we could address it. I mean, we could try to line up the Caesars with the presidents of the United States, and and you know we we spent a lot of time looking at those things. We didn't, didn't really deal with this chart that we had just looked at, and so I do want to think about it a bit more. And I'll probably present something on it a bit later. But all I wanted to do is touch on the fact that we have this chart and we have evidences for this November 9th and October 13th and June 9th and July 18th, all in that history. Right. So we have that history. This chart is representing something that we can connect to our history. And now, if we were to look at our big line, so remember, I'll, I'll bring up the chart again. So one of the things we need to think about. So back then in 2017, obviously they didn't have a great understanding of the lines. That is, we were looking at the Sunday law as, you know, the mid, midnight's coming, the midnight cry's coming, Sunday law's coming. And then we kept believing that we were coming to midnight. And then that midnight would pass and we obviously weren't at midnight at least on the line that we were imagined we were on, right? So the line that Jeff has, that 9-11 to the Sunday law, we know we're not to midnight yet. We, we've passed symbols of midnight because we've, we've been zoomed into uh, the arrival of 9-11 as the second angel's message. So one of the things I would do with this is I would, I would change this chart a little bit differently um, so I'd have, you know, if you're going to have the time at the end, Augustus, um, it, it doesn't make sense to place it in 1992. So if Augustus represents Obama, does it make sense to put that in 1992? So, so there's a number of other problems with this. So first off, who does Julius Caesar typify? How, how do we place Julius Caesar? Are you seeing the problems that, that we're having in trying to apply this chart to where we are right now? So if we're going to take Daniel 11, you know, versus whatever it is, 17 to 22, could we line it up like this? Nobody wants to answer. OK, so Julius Caesar is is Bush the second. Right. Augustus is Obama. Tiberius is Trump. You can see how this doesn't fit in with with this section that we're looking at. That is. We couldn't take this line particularly and and line up these presidents in this way on this timeline. Because where did we put Julius Caesar? We put him at 1991, right? Bush II is 1991. Then anybody? I thought that was Bush Bush one, wasn't it? At 1991 is George Bush II. George Bush I is in 1989. So you can see that this list of Caesars doesn't line up with the list that we have, like in but, Daniel chapter. Well, George Bush served four years, did he? That would be, what is that? Is that 90? That's 91. That's three years. He'd still been president at that time. George Bush nine, won. 9-11. Oh, I'm 9-11. I thought she was talking about it. It says 1989. Yeah, so in 1989, you have George Bush the first. Right. We understand that Julius Caesar represents George Bush the second in in Daniel 11 verse 
you know, 20, 21, 22, right? We, we have Julius Caesar and we're tying up Julius, Julius Caesar with George Bush II. August, this is what Jeff did, right? Augustus is Obama. Tiberius is Trump. So Jeff never did anything like this with the seven Caesars, right? He didn't, this is, this is in a sense a different study. This, this is trying to take the seven, the first seven Caesars of Rome and paralleling them with uh, the presidents of the United States. And so we had in our line, uh, quite a bit of different line. So we would have, you know, Julius Caesar would be Reagan. Uh, Augustus would be um, uh, George Bush the first, right? You understand what I'm saying? Because we were dealing with the seven kings. If we're dealing with the seven kings, we would match them up. So the first seven Caesars of Rome, you would have to line up with the, the, the seven, the last seven presidents of the United States. So that can be confusing because we're dealing with something different here. So that's all I'm trying to say is that this first seven Caesars of Rome is a different study than the study we're doing in Daniel 11 versus whatever it starts, 18, 19, 20. It goes up to verse 22. So it's a different study. They're not going to line up with the other line that we have. They're not going to line up with this line. So what we have in this verse is we in, in Daniel 11, we've looked at Julius Caesar represents George Bush II. Augustus, the one who's the raiser of taxes, that's going to be Obama. The vile person, that's going to be Tiberius. And then after that, it's going to talk about uh, the arms of the flood, right? Who 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 um who represents um, George Bush the first in that line? No one. I mean, in in the line that Odilia has drawn. George Bush the first is is supposed to line up. He's trying to line him up. I'm not sure uh, who he's lining it up with because he doesn't show it. Um, I'd have to look at what he did before. So let me see. I'll show you another chart that just shows all of this more clearly. Yeah. So so what what you're talking about? See, that's what I don't want you to get confused about, right? So in some ways, showing that chart dealing with Nero would confuse people. So here we have the seven kings, right? Cyrus, because Darius the Mede lines up with Reagan. Cyrus lines up with Bush the first, which also lines up with Augustus. So this is one study. So I'm trying to figure out which. So this is a different study. Let me see where is the one I want. Yeah, here's the one we want. So the one on the on the, the long line on the bottom, not the one with the 2520. So you've got Darius the Mede is Reagan, Cyrus is Bush the first, Cambyses is Clinton, False Murtis is Bush the second, Darius the first is Obama, Xerxes, Trump, right? Now, so these are going to be uh, with Persia, right? Right. So then we, we wanted to line them up with... Um, so I'm trying to figure out which line this was. Because this is a mixture of different lines. So if you're going to line them up, we put, so what he would have been doing, I think, is putting a Julius Caesar with Cyrus, uh, Augustus with Cambyses. So that would be Clinton. So that doesn't make sense. I know I have another chart of this. I just don't know where it is. I don't mean to draw you off track or not. That's just, you, you don't need to apologize. This is what we're doing. We're studying, trying to answer these questions. So we want to get this straight in our heads. Maybe I'll put in uh, Nero. Search for Nero. That might be better. Ah, here we go. This is the chart I want. It's a little bit small. I'll zoom in. So what we have here is we have... We have the emperor, so we don't have Julius Caesar in this line. So this was our interpretation of the line, uh, dealing with the ten kings. Still not the best diagram, but but the idea anyway is that you're going to have you're going to have the first ten emperors uh, go all the way to Titus. So this is a different study. But anyway, 
if we're looking at the emperors, Augustus is the first emperor, and Augustus would line up with um, Bush the first, because we wouldn't line him up with Darius the Mede. We would put Julius Caesar or, right? You understand what I'm saying? So here we have these different, these, this is a different line again. The point that I'm trying to make, so I'm going to just go back here, that when we're addressing these presidents of the United States and we're lining them up with the emperors, it's not about the line of the seven emperors or the seven Caesars or the seven kings, right? This is not addressing that line. This is something that Jeff did back in 2016 where he recognized that in Daniel chapter 11 that um, we're going to have Julius Caesar be Bush the second, Augustus Caesar being Obama, and Tiberius Caesar being Trump, the vile person, right? So there are different studies. We we can't we can't compare the two because they're they're marking completely different uh, presidents as completely different emperors. Does that make sense? So that's why I didn't really want to show the chart because I thought it might confuse people. So we're not dealing with that study. What we're looking at is in that study, Odilio is recognizing symbols that attach Nero to the symbol of July 18th. And, and what I think, that the way that we should understand this, is that, that when we're dealing with Nero, he's not here per se, right? It doesn't mention Nero as a person. It doesn't mention him directly. But it's going to talk about the arms of a flood. So, And with the arms of the flood, they shall be overflown from before God's face, right? And shall be broken. Also, the Prince of the Covenant. So there's a connection between the crucifixion of Christ and the destruction of Jerusalem. And that is clearly seen in Daniel 9, verse 26 and 27, where each of those verses tell you the same thing. The Prince of the Covenant is going to be crucified in the midst of the week, and Jerusalem, the city, and the temple are going to be destroyed by Titus. Right? That's what it's telling you. And, and so here it's telling us the same information. But we can see also that in that period of time, we're going to have persecution begin. And it's going to begin with Nero. So what we would do with Nero is we would take Nero and show that he represents... July 18th, what happens at July 18th. Now that is a zoom into something in our history. It's, Odilius tried to put this on a bigger line, but Nero as a symbol is not on the bigger line. Like you couldn't put Nero and all those, those kings in the way that he did. Nero, you know, uh, can, can I, you, you're saying Nero represents July 18th. Well, I was on. I was on. Wonder, I'm asking, wondering if. So you're saying that the persecution persecution started in July 18th? Yes, within this movement. Within this movement, okay. So Nero is re representing something that occurs within the movement, not something that happens on a worldwide scale. Now, okay. what happens in the movement is typical of what's going to happen. So in that sense. We could, we could apply Nero, but when we're looking at the symbols here, the, the symbols that we have with Nero that, that make him important are the symbols that tie him to time within this movement. October 13th, June 9th, July 18th, right? Right. And okay, can I ask this question then? Yeah. If yeah. We're, not, we're, not, we're not going to um, – are we going to place like, – are we going to say who would Nero – represent as far as presidents that's what i'm saying is it's not about the presidents i know it ain't but I, i'm just saying if we was going to do it what would what, who would he what would who would he represent he doesn't so he don't represent no president not in any line that we've established no okay all right that's what i'm trying to say is he has this line of of these emperors, and we have a line of the presidents. And I'm saying that, that when we're looking at Nero, all these symbols that he shows with Nero 
aren't really about the line of the seven emperors, right? He puts it on that line, but I'm saying that line is is not what we're looking at. That line doesn't make any sense. Because when we look at those symbols, it's about July 18th. July 18th is not the midnight cry, right, on, on any big line with the Sunday law following. He doesn't know that back in, in they don't know that back in 2017. But in 2021, Odilio should have known that, right? One of the problems that I had with what Odilio was presenting is he was ignoring and because he wasn't aware of it. So he wasn't aware of everything that we were teaching about the lines in 2021. Okay. He hadn't understood yet the problem that we had made in the past. So he's working with an understanding of the lines that still came from Parminder. You know, it's a mixture of what Jeff was teaching and Parminder was teaching. And so, so Adilio tried to establish that July 18th was correct, just like uh, Colin tried to establish that the Trump prediction was correct, right? These two people are, are extremely important in that regard. But in both cases, they're not aware of what God had shown us regarding these lines. And so they're going to draw faulty conclusions. So it's not that they're bad people or anything like that. It's just the reality is they weren't following what we were doing. And, and what we were doing was understanding and unfolding these lines um, in a way that now we could we could grasp what happened with July 18th, why it failed, right? Well, I, and I that's agree still with you, Rufus, in, in, you know, July 18th because, you know, <laughs> I've seen it. So, but anyway. Yeah, so July 18th, we have persecution in connection with the July 18th prediction. It's an internal persecution that occurred within this movement. Right. Yeah, that, that does become typical of stuff at the end of the world. But we can't take Nero and and use him to 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 mark him as one of the Caesars on a line of seven Caesars and say that that's the seven presidents because it doesn't fit. But it does fit here. That's what I'm trying to say is that if we're going to look at these these, these uh, emperors here, or Caesars, you know, Julius Caesar, Dean Bush the first, right? We can see that we've zoomed into 9/11, and and July 18th is part of that. We already have it there, and and we have the crucifixion of Christ and the persecution. Now it's it's sort of in reverse order because we know the crucifixion of Christ happens, and then the persecution of Christians happens. Right. And then the destruction of Jerusalem happens. And, and it's not in that order. It's going to say with the arms of the flood, they shall be overflown from before God's face. Right. And that, of course, is is the destruction of Jerusalem. And then it says um, and shall be broken. Now, we're saying that word broken has to do with persecuted. So that's the persecution that happens both after the destruction of Jerusalem, but also before. But all I'm saying is that we can take these symbols from the Nero study and we can place them here in this history and they fit. And and we can also say, you know, the crucifixion of Christ typ- typifies the persecution that happens within this movement in that history, right? In that 777 structure. Right. Okay. But now, we didn't expect that. We weren't really looking for... Uh, <laughs> The idea that we'd be persecuted by our, you know, people within the movement. But that's what's happened. And, and when I say, you know, we're persecuted, I'm not like complaining. I'm not like trying to be a victim or anything. Uh, you know, I'm just saying the simple fact is what happened was, and, and we, we, we saw it unfold, that people were not interested in, in studying about why July 18, 2020 failed. And that happened really early on. I mean, we know obviously with um, uh, what happened with the December 6th declaration. I mean, that's going to be what, July, August, September, October, November. You know, so like less than five months after July 18th. But there was a lot of opposition um, that people aren't aware of that I was experiencing 
in that period of time, some of it that you would be aware of. I was, aware of, of it, yeah, I was aware of it yesterday. So anyway, <laughs> I'm yeah, sad. So. Saying, but I'm just saying that, you know, there was, um, we don't know, need to go into all the details that we know. We saw it unfold. But that was happening even like, even before July 18th, actually. So, I mean, for me, uh, it, it started quite early. So there was a, a strong, uh, you know, because, I mean, I was there in 2018. I get kicked out of the School of Profits. 2018, there was a camp meeting. And some people from Canada went to that camp meeting and then heard all the gossip about me and Heidi from people there. And that really affected my relationship with the Canadian group because people believe the gossip. Even after a lot of these people left the movement, they still cl clung to this gossip. Nobody ever came to me and said, is this true? Right. They just believed the gossip. And it affected my relationship with them. So when people got back from that camp meeting, I noticed the coldness in which Heidi and I were being treated. And that didn't exist before. So so this was something quite new. Well, I'm going to have to uh, think on this a little bit more because it, it is. It is kind of confusing. But I'm on a, um, What's confusing? That persecution? It, no, not the persecution. I'm talking about them lines. So I'm on a The lines to, I showed you? Yeah, the lines you showed me. But that line is wrong. Just ignore that line. That's what I'm trying to say. It, it's, not, it's not a valid line. Like, there are some things about that line that could, could be applied somewhere, but... Uh, the way that he sets up that line with Midnight and the Midnight Cry Sunday Law, we know that July 18th is not the Midnight Cry. We know November 9th is not Midnight. Okay. All right. Right. Now they did exist in some ways within our, within our lines itself, but he's putting it on this bigger line, you know, all the way to the actual Sunday Law. And, and okay. that was the that people had is they didn't understand that we were when we're looking at at November 9th and July 18th that we're actually zoomed into a waymark and that waymark is 9/11 it's it's not midnight it's not the midnight cry it's not the sunday law we're not zoomed into that we're we're zoomed into 9/11 as the arrival of the second angel's message now in some ways we're it's also the history of the sunday law but it's at the beginning of the history of the Sunday law. So we're still, we still have never come to the midnight way mark, right? Okay. On that bigger line that Jeff has. And yet that's what Adilio is trying to do. That's what we were always trying to do is we were looking for, you know, 9-11, midnight, midnight, cry, Sunday law. So when are we to midnight? And we had this theory about all these different groups that are going to be tested, but that doesn't occur in Millerite history. And so, well, why are we doing something different than Millerite history? And the thing that Parminder abandoned was the idea that when we zoom into a waymark, we have a whole other line. And so what we need to understand is that in our lines, we zoom into a waymark and we can have a line. But that line is not the big line, right? That line is just that in each waymark, there is a line. And then you can zoom into the waymarks in that line. Right. That's what we did in the whole thing of understanding the lines. Right. OK. So when we look at Nero, all I'm saying is that Nero has all of these symbols of July 18, 2020. But that's not the midnight cry on the big line. Right. Well, I wouldn't. Right? I wouldn't concern about whether it's midnight cry or not, because we we already discussed it. And what I was getting around is. Well, anyway, it, we we don't use it as prejudice, in other words. Okay. We, don't use, we don't try to match them up with prejudice. Well, we're, right? match, we're matching presidents up here, but that's not the line of the seven presidents, right? So this these okay. when we're putting Bush the second as Julius Caesar, that's not on that line of the of the seven presidents, right? Because. Uh, Bush the first, Bush the first, or 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 Clinton or something. You know, it, it would well it'd probably be um, Reagan who would line up with Julius Caesar. Is what I would do. But but you understand what I'm saying. So Bush yeah. the second in that line isn't Julius Caesar. But here Jeff put Bush the second as Julius Caesar. 
he put Obama as Augustus, right? And he put Trump as Tiberius. So this can't have anything to do with that line that we saw there. Okay. Okay? And, and that's why I didn't want to confuse you. But hopefully I've unconfused you. Yeah, well, I, yeah. <laughs> and, and, the, and the thing about that line, you know, the first seven Caesars, it definitely cannot be marked in the way that Odilio marked it. Okay. Because it, it doesn't fit, right? It doesn't fit with what happened on, on the big line. Because he's taking that as a big line from 1989 to the Sunday line. And he's trying to fit those emperors in there. And I'm saying that Nero doesn't fit in there. Nero fits in July 18, right, as a symbol. So he symbolizes the persecution. Now, if we're going to take the burning of Rome, uh, what would that parallel within this movement? And what would uh, who what would Nero represent? I mean, he represents July 18, but what in connection? The persecution that happens. So, so what's the burning of Rome in our history in July 18th in this movement? Is there anything that parallels the burning of Rome? Where where's the papal spirit coming from in this movement? Well, the way I see it, it would probably be the um, the other side of the group. Okay, right. So so we could see, you know, the dismantling of FFA, right? right. That would be a parallel to the burning of Rome. And and they destroyed everything in the past. We could even say what Jeff has done with abandoning all the light since uh, 2012. Yeah, I noticed yesterday also he took down the um, videos leading up to July 18th. And I went back and I checked all my um, newsletters. And yeah. I found the newsletters he sent he sent me during that time, and they were saying, you know, like that. Um, how was it that that um, Jeff had never typified um, July eighteenth with um, October the twenty second, eighteen forty four? And I went back and I found a quote where he where he um, said that it was typified by July 18th. Yeah, well, no, we know he did say that. So, oh, yeah, I mean, I think this is the problem that I have. So the the, the rewriting of history, is, is that is that something that we should do? No, but, no. but I, I got it I right never, here. I never believe they should have taken down anybody's videos. And then they said, well, if we put at least somebody's video up after they leave the movement, I mean, it's not even videos that people were teaching Eric. They were just videos of people. Once they left the movement, they would take down their videos, right? All right. And they said, well, then it means we're endorsing what they're saying. All you need to do is write a disclaimer, right, in the description of the video. And you could say, we're leaving this up. You know, there's things here that are true, things that we disagree with, whatever. But you leave them up. You, you don't want to b- burn books, who who burns books? The, the papacy. This who yeah. burns them? Yeah, rewrites history. And, Russia does. And pe- yeah, yeah, people who act like act like the pope. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it'd be different if they're like books of magic or something like that. You know, and the silversmiths. You know, they. You know, the people uh, destroy this. You know, occultic occult literature. But that's not what we're talking about. That happened in this movement. It's just they take down their own videos, right? We don't just, we don't agree with this anymore, and we don't want people to know what we used to teach. So I would say that that's the burning down of Rome. Right. I can right. see that. I can see that. But... Rewriting the history of July 18. Yeah. And that persecution then continues. So that's all I really wanted to say about about this Nero symbolism because I think the symbolism is there. It, it addresses the time setting. Nero's gonna. Rain from October 13th to um, June 9th, right? That June 9th to October 13th gives us that 126 days where we're going to count 391 and a half days to November 9th and then 252 days to July 18th. So it's going to give us that 777 structure. So all I'm saying is that we can take all of this persecution here and and we can see that it's going to start with Nero. So when it says, uh, and shall be broken, I mean, we could connect that with Nero. We could say it's going backwards. It's going to deal with the destruction of Jerusalem, 
the persecution that precedes that, and then uh, the crucifixion of Christ that precedes that. And so that's that's giving us this structure. It's connecting us. And we know July 18th is already connected uh, to the symbol of, of the destruction of Jerusalem through the 10th day of the fifth month symbol. So so there's a lot of things that, you know, people have studied before that that still apply. But we we understand them more correctly, you know, more deeply. We we have a place in which to put these things. And, you know, and what what Odilio was doing, there's nothing wrong with what he was trying to do or, or what they were trying to do in 2017, looking at the first seven Caesars. But when it comes to understanding these waymarks, uh, we, the only way that we can really understand them is to understand the lines correctly. And, and that we know that we, we're, we're looking at a bunch of lines, but those lines, we can't confuse them with the big line, right? We can't confuse them with, I mean, and even our line, you know, the line that Jeff has is still just to zoom into what Ellen White calls the Sunday law, right? When the mighty angel of Revelation 18 comes down and then you have the loud cry. Well, we're in that history, but we're just in the beginning of it. 9-11 is the beginning of that Sunday law. That's where Revelation 18 uh, begins is at 9-11. But as we continue to move through history, we can see all of these other lines that are occurring within those different way marks. We can keep zooming in. And that's what I believe that Nero is showing us because he's clearly showing July 18, 2020 and July 18, 2020 is not Paneum, right? I mean, it is in one sense within uh, a zoom into, but when we're dealing with Paneum, when we're dealing with the midnight cry on Jeff's line, July 18th is not the midnight cry. And, and I've, I've made an argument that July 18th typifies in Millerite history, July 18, 1844, three days before midnight is the prediction before midnight, and it typifies October 22nd. And that this movement is Samuel Snow, and that the July 18th is, is typifying something that's going to happen later. So when we say July 18th parallels October 22nd, 1844, that's only within our own movement. You know, we know that October 22nd, 1844, uh, typifies the close of probation that's going to happen when Jesus says, let him that is righteous be righteous. So obviously the beginning of, of the investigative judgment and the end of the investigative judgment are, are connected. So, so there are things that we just, um, you know, we didn't understand in the past, but as truth unfolds, we see it more clearly, but, it, and it doesn't mean that we abandon what God showed us in the past. We don't, we don't get rid of July 18, right? Which is what people are doing today in the movement. We're just, you know, it's, it's, it's an embarrassment, embarrassment. It's an error. It's whatever they want to call it. Um, but in reality it was given to us by God and the symbols for it. Even if we've misinterpreted them in the past, doesn't mean that those weren't given us by God, just as October 22nd, Christ did not come back to this earth. So are you going to abandon October 22nd because Jesus didn't come back? Well, that's what most people did. But as Seventh-day Adventists, we should know that we can't do that. We can't abandon July 18th just because the prediction didn't happen the way that we expected. Okay. So it took a little bit longer than I thought it would, but that's okay. So any questions about any of this? Was that profitable to go through that? clarification okay now so last thursday does anybody remember the puzzles that we were addressing we were we were kind of bogged down a little bit anybody remember what particularly we were bogged down about nobody remembers weren't we having a problem because of this with the de definition of league yeah so we looked at league yeah and small people and those things we were addressing correct Okay. And, and so we had a little bit of, like yesterday, um, in your study, I mean, we ran into Hosea, uh, four verse 17 again. Right. 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 And, and so what's the significance of that? So when we deal with this league, 
uh, what is the conclusion we draw? Well, who's making the lead to who? I've been considering that the Adventist Church was making the league with Rome, but we're looking at at this with the league with the small people and trying to place this onto this line. Okay, yeah. So, so we we, we tried all kinds of things, right? Right. We did everything like inside out, upside down, backwards, whatever, you know. Um, and so. When we deal with this league, we know that this is a and a repeat and enlarge, and so it's going to go back to 9/11. And part of our problem that we were having is in our line, we had 1989. That is, this even for a timeline. Here we have these waymarks, and we said, well, this the first waymark, the arrival of the first message, we have is November 9th, 1989, and so. How do we reconcile that we're, we really clearly must see that this occurs at 9-11, this league, right? We don't put it at 1989. Am I correct there? Or because we, we put it in, in our in our notes as 9-11. Correct. And, and part of that had to do with the fact uh, of, of some of the symbols that were there. But um, let me see here. So so we had. You know, we looked back at the league. It's Ephraim shall be joined to idols, even though everybody says joined to his idols, leave them alone. But we would know that this would represent uh, the United States, not the Seventh Day Adventist Church. But we still have this league connected with spiritual formation of the Protestants. Now, this is going to be accepted by the Seventh Day Adventist Church. So the Seventh Day Adventist Church is there because they want to be part of the Protestants. So that means there's a, a league uh, that occurs between the Protestants and the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which connects them to Rome. So uh, is, is that acceptable as an explanation, that this is 9-11? That should be correct. Okay. Now, we have on this chart, the first angel arrives in 1989. So... How do we address this problem? We we have in our notes, verse 23 is going to be 9-11. We have a chart that starts with 1989 with the arrival of the first message. And we put the arrival of the first message at 9-11 in, in our notes. So how do we reconcile this? Can we say, um, now, now another thing about... Uh, 161 and 158 is um, there is this history that we have at 1989 that we don't have in this chart that we should put in. So um, I'm just going to borrow this. So what have I done here? So I put December 25th, 1991. So one of the things that we have about that date of the league is that it has two dates attached to it, 161 and 158. Can I say that the league actually goes here or begins here? Can I do this? So I'm going to say, okay, because we have that double date, and we already have a tied that double date to the time of the end. So, so we can say, and, and we've done this many, many lines, we've said that's the time of the end, 1989 to 91, it's the arrival of the first message from November 9th, 1989 to December 25th, 91. Now we have 9-11 as this league, and so we would have another line where we're going to say 9-11 is the time of the end, the arrival of the first message. But how does this 777 structure help us? So is, you know, if we take uh, 9-11 and 11-9, are they the same way, Mark? I would say no. Okay. Well, we've said that they are. All right. Many times. That is, 9-11 represents 11-9. All right. Okay. I'm correct. And, yeah. So, now, depends where how you place them or how you use them. But what we can say here is that we have this number of days. So, we have the 11-9 at the center. So, remember how we got that. 
We took the 6256 and we counted from December 25th, 2021, the end of our 77 stru- structure backwards to 6256 days. And it brought us to the center of this November 9th chiasm, right? So we have this November 9th chiasm. And then we could, we could, we noticed that we had, we could divide that chiasm this 30 years, uh, the 10,000, um, whatever it is, um, 897 days or something. Is that what it is? 10,957 days. Okay. 10,957 days. I just added them together. Um, which we get from, the 10,957 days, where did we find that 30 year period in what, what symbols gave us that period of time? Anybody remember? So if we go 10,957, that was from the story of Jephthah and the, and the Shibboleth, right? That is, we took the name of Jephthah and the Hebrew number for that, and the word shibboleth, we added them together at 10,957. So we have this symbol in the story of Jephthah that goes from 1989 to uh, 1919, or 2019, right? So both dealing with the 11th day of, or, yeah, the ninth day of the 11th month, the 11th month, ninth day, November 11th. We have it represented here as well. This chart, we know that it relates to Capricar's constant. There's all these different things that we related this shibboleth to. So we have this 30 days now divided in half. What is the significance of that? That it's divided in this manner. So if we think about a lot of the symbols that are here, we have that first period is changeful. So tie is the word. We have that period of time between, and I can't really do it this way because I'm going to have to, obviously this is the number of days from 1989, so I'm going to have to just get another, uh, I'm going to borrow one of these, like these dashed ones. Um, I'm just going to put this here from 1989 to 9-11. That's going to be this one. Okay, so we have this uh, who is like God symbol. So there's the challenge. We have the, the fathers have eaten the sour grapes, the children's teeth are set on edge. We have that from 9-11 to November 9th, the center of the chiasm. We have another 5,101 days, the brain of a donkey. And so we have, of course, the even for a time. We have the even that's going to go from 9-11-04, the center of the chiasm, to June 22nd, 2020. It's going to be 187 days to December 25th, 2020, and then 365 days to December 25th, 2021. We also got the 226 days from uh, November 9th, 2019 to 622, so we're 22nd day of the sixth month. So we, we have all of these symbols. And now we're, we're, we're saying, well, we actually mark 9-11 as the arrival of the first angel. But can we just connect this whole history as the arrival of the first angel? That 9-11 and 11-9 are are tied together as a way mark. So so we put the arrival here, but but we could just, you know, put the arrival here. So, no, we're not going to say this is necessarily a period of darkness, but... But it's definitely related. This is a period that we would call the time of the end from 11.9 to 89. Now, the formalization then would be this way, Mark, and the empowerment would be something else. So what would we mark as the empowerment? Is there something that we can put in this line that belongs here that we didn't put in this line? Now, one of the things is we liked is we liked that this is the empowerment is the end of this chiasm. And so we like the empowerment here as the, as, um, the end of, it's, you know, connected with this chiasm. But what, what, what can we do? Is there something that needs to be here that's not here? Or are we just going to leave our line, you know, contradicting what uh, our verses interpretation are? 
What was it that was occurring in 2017 and 2018 that could be used as an empowerment? Yeah. So, so one of the things we would need in here is, is, is time itself, right? So sure, we have in Jeff's summary on October 22nd or October 28th, 2018. That's the summary of the 391. But we do have the, the camp meetings. And, and I, you know, and I, I'm, I'm not sure that I have a good answer. You know. What was the date of the Italian camp meeting? The one in 2017 or 2018. That's, I'm, I'm not recalling two of them, but okay. Yeah. So, so 2017, two. on it's going to be uh, June 2nd, 2017. Jeff is going to he's going to open the Sabbath with a prayer at 9:11, which is sunset where they are in Italy. So at 9:11, which is sunset, he he has a prayer to open the Sabbath, and he's going to be closing the day of Pentecost, though he's not aware it's the day of Pentecost. So the day of Pentecost was on a Friday that day on the biblical calendar. So with the day of Pentecost, there's a symbol of 120 associated with it. I believe I'm right on that. I, I, I could be getting some of this wrong. Yeah, but I believe it was was Pentecost, um, if I remember correctly. I just have to look quickly. Um, was it Pentecost or was it First Fruits? Okay, so let me see. I might be getting 2018. No. So it's going to be uh, June 2nd is the 6th of... Sixth day of the third month in 2017. Okay. So, so he's going to be uh, closing the Sabbath on that day, or opening the Sabbath, pardon me, and it's going to be closing Pentecost, right? So it's it's a Friday, and he's going to have that 9-11 prayer at sunset. So he's going to be beginning the Sabbath with this prayer at 9-11. And there's a note made of it, um, and I have a copy of the note that was put on Facebook at the time. And then in 2018, on June 9th, so it's going to be one year and one week later, he's going to, let me see here. Yeah, he's going to be, so it's going to be a Friday. So it looks like he's opening the Sabbath as well. Oh, no, I'm on, never mind. I'm on the wrong thing here. There we go. Yeah, he's going to be closing the Sabbath on June 9th, 2018. Now that's going to be the 23rd day of the second month. Uh, on the biblical calendar. So I don't know any significance in that, but it's going to be June 9th. So he's going to be closing the Sabbath. And from there, we're going to count the 126 days to October 13th, right? In 2018, which is going to be the Sabbath as well. And that at noon, I'm going to do the calculation of the 391 and a half days. So I don't know if we could put some of this in here or, or how it would fit. I'd have to really think about it. One is I would want to look at some of the numbers that we have in these verses. I would want something in these verses uh, to give us these way marks. So, and that's one of the other problems that we have here is we have the league, uh, but then we're going to have uh, different things that are going to happen. So I, I'm, I'm not sure. I think there's, there's that we need to kind of redo this line in some way. But I'm not sure how at this point. But in some ways, there's nothing wrong with the other line. It just it doesn't match up with these verses. It it could be a uh, a line within a line within one of the way marks. But the main thing here, I guess, what I would be saying is that this even for a time is addressing time within this movement, specifically dealing with these. This, these time predictions, dealing with the 391.5. So, you know, I wish I had a better answer at this point. I don't, but we're going to look at this tomorrow. And I'm going to try to get some more uh, time uh, today to look at it before tomorrow. But but you see the problem. So this is what we were struggling with, you know, just first getting the historical interpretation correct, then getting our application straightened out. And now we have to try to fit these together. And, you know, there might be something else that we just we haven't seen yet. And any questions about this at this point? I, I mean, I'm not wanting to confuse people, but we need to understand this. And I don't think we understand it enough yet. With that, I would unfortunately have to agree. Yeah. 
So, so we have lots of symbols. We know that there's, there's something here, but we just don't know what it is. And, and we have to remember that this, this is all about, uh, this league. And, and that's why it's important. Now, now I think there's something else about this that, um, you know, I want you to sort of consider. Uh, and it goes back to what we were uh, studying at the beginning of the study today. Now, because this is going to, it's going to repeat some of this history, right? That is the thing where it says, they shall, he shall do that which your fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey, the spoil, and the riches. And it shouldn't be among them. It should just, he should scatter the prey, the spoil, and the riches. Among them is not in the text, which I always find odd that they don't put it in italics, but they don't always put everything in italics. And so we know that's the persecution. And then it says, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time, right? So we know that there is a time prophecy attached to that. And um, him forecasting his devices, well, we know that this is Rome. Um, but if we're going to apply this to this movement in some way, uh, how would we apply that? Because this line says it's in this movement. So there, there, there is something about this this line that we have not seen that we don't see in 23 and 24 and how we apply it because we know it first starts with this league with the protestants but this league with the protestants continues through this movement and the sour grapes the reason why i think that's an important symbol is because it deals with something being passed from one generation to another and and no more shall this proverb be heard that the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. That means at some point that inheritance, genetic defect, whatever you want to call it, is um, is abandoned, right? Because the problem with Seventh-day Adventists is we inherit the sins of the fathers. We forget the first generation. All that we end up with is these these errors that have accumulated these genetic errors that have accumulated and have mutated our our spiritual dna so that the final generation forgets the first generation right and 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 so we have a bunch of errors and those errors need to be corrected and this movement has not not done the work that it's supposed to do in correcting those errors that is it, it was doing it but when it ran into a disappointment you know, the dog turns to its vomit again, right? It's pig to the wallowing in the mire. We're really no different than the church that we criticized. We haven't been corrected. We haven't been following Miller's rules. We've just been making a pretense. And, and that's seen in how we treat one another. Anyway, we're going to come back to this tomorrow. So let's close with prayer. The dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today and for each person. And I pray that you can continue to be with us, that you can bring us together again uh, to open your word. And we ask that you can clear our minds as we study individually to understand these things, and that you can forgive us for our sins. We pray for your care and protection for our loved ones this week and for, for each other. And uh, we pray for those searching for truth, that you can lead them, and that uh, the things that we can do will uh, aid your work instead of hindering it. And we pray this and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.